backing up my game and I'm my head out west Where real women come equipped with scripts and fake press Find a nest in the hills, chill like Flint Buy an old drop top, find a spot to pick Welcome to D1 Sports Talk Podcast Coach, I came in that real loud just then How you doing, Coach? Hey, I'm chilling home, boy You know what they say on a day like today, don't you? What's that? Cupid doesn't lie <laughs> it's Valentine Day, my boy. Go, go, you you gonna sing to the people? You won't know unless you give him a try. Cupid. Go, Shout go. Out to Cupid today. Yeah, and I just came in since we had this old crazy introduction, I can hit myself on the feedback. I didn't even introduce myself. This is your boy Tight One Half of D One Sports Talk Podcast. And of course y'all just heard Coach. Coach, were, were you in were you in the choir growing up, Coach? Huh? Were you in the Were you in the church choir? No, man. I stayed away from that. I'm a I'm a uh, shower choir member. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the uh, all shower quartet. <laughs> go, go. How your Valentine's Day going, my boy? Man, it went good. You know, I I do the whole Valentine's Day thing on Saturday. I ain't mad at you. Cause, Cause the day of Valentine's, you can't go nowhere to sit down and eat. They don't take reservations. And I'm talking about in the big city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the big city, they don't take reservations. And then today it's, it's about three degrees here today. So I, man, I've been slow motion with it today. What about yourself? Oh yeah, man. We just been chilling, man. Uh, we did a little family out on the day. Uh, we went to Chuck E. Cheese today. Chuck E. Cheese for the young ladies in the house. Uh, but that's about it, man. My, my mom, them gonna come by later on. And that'll end up wrapping up my Valentine's Day with all the women in my life. So, uh, been a, been a day of family so far today. Well, what, what y'all gonna do? Y'all, y'all cooking today? Or what, what's your mom coming over there to eat? I think they're gonna come by here and bring my girl something. And then obviously we got something for her. So they're just stopping by, um, doing their travelings of, of the day. And um, so we gonna we gonna we gonna sit down with them and rap for a little bit. You know, me and my brother will probably get on that TV, but them women sitting there and talk about something. Well, it ain't nothing on the TV. But before we even get into that, because that's gonna be uh, along the lines of my disappointments. Uh, but before we even get into that, uh, I was listening to the Retroscope podcast. That's the podcast with BG and the Shy Peacock, part of the uh, the New South Movement Network. And Coach, you know that this is a leap year, right? Oh yeah. So so with this being a leap year, they say this is the gift that the guys supposed to get the gifts. Oh, I ain't I ain't know we was ever off year. <laughs> they this is a leap year, coach. Coach, oh, so you didn't you didn't get your gift? I ain't know I ain't know when we off off year. Somebody need to help me. I I need to be helped. Well, that's what I I was learning that on the on the shop on the on the retroscope podcast. So. They say that this is a leap year. So, Coach, on the years that we have presidential uh, debates and the presidential election and the years that we have the Olympics games, this year is going to be in Rio when they say, well, they say that water worse than Flint water. Mm. Uh, on those years, Coach, those are supposed to be the years that we supposed to get gifts. So uh, you might want to go back and ask for, for a return of investment on on your on your uh, Valentine's today, men of America don't fall into that trap, coach. Uh, coach, all we doing is trying to make America great again. That's a trap for the. That's a trap set by the man. <laughs> I'll just fall into that trap, men of America. Coach, you supposed to go to your daughters and say, "Hey, I need all of my tickets back <laughs> from Chuck E. Cheese, and I oh, need you oh. to, huh?" Oh, Chuck and G definitely on my list today. You supposed to you supposed to go to go to your wife and your mother and you supposed to say, Hey, I'm returning all the gifts I purchased because those were supposed to have been given to me. Mm, I'm gonna have to do some research on this. I ain't know we had an off year. Cause they say it's every leap year. That's what that's according to the Retroscope podcast. And I like to uh I like to personally thank B G for helping me to the game on this. And uh, for those of you that are listening to this podcast on Tuesday, uh, you should go and listen to the the Saturn Return episode in which BG um, prophesied and, and informed me of that. Amen. Amen. So let's get right into it, Coach. Coach, uh, what's going on at the high school over there? Uh, 
uh, is, uh, what's going on in sports? Because you you're out of indoor track. So so how, what is the transition like over in the high school? Pretty quiet right now. Uh, just for a moment, things picked up a little bit here toward the end of the week. We are we are in between out indoor and outdoor season right now. So we just training right now. We'll have our first uh, indoor outdoor meet at the beginning of next month. Our girls basketball team um, were season and tournament champs. They're area champs. Uh, I want to say they pick up on Wednesday. Uh, they will play the lady. The Lady Generals of Robert E. Lee in Montgomery at the Apple Dome. Uh, our boys, unfortunately, failed to Central Phoenix City for the third time this season. Central is ranked the number one boys basketball team in 7A. We failed to them for the third time in the championship game for the area. Uh, our boys will also play the men of Robert E. Lee. High school in the Acadome on Wednesday. I think the games are back to back. The boys and our girls. I think the Lee boys are ranked number three in state. Uh, so that's a tall task for the AHS boys. So uh, we'll see how they do it. Uh, just read this morning we had wrestling had their um, sectionals this past weekend. Uh, we had four kids qualify for state, which is will be this coming weekend. Uh, in Huntsville. So uh, that's about it right now. Baseball training real hard and um, junior high uh, track and field about to get tuned up. Softball uh, and soccer are both in, in heavy training uh, and everybody should be kicking off here pretty soon. So statewide, we basically go into the, you know, back down in Mobile when I was in school, we, we would go to Faulkner. If you, if you won your game, then you headed to Faulkner for regionals. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it sounds like they're in the regionals. And then if you win at Faulkner, then you make your way uh, down to Birmingham. Is that, is, uh, they don't have Faulkner down in Mobile anymore. I think they go to South Alabama, but it's still, you know, that regional. So it sounds like we're in a regional tournament now. Yeah, yeah, about to move to regional, man. Well, I think it's sub-regional first, then regional. I, I think. I'm not for sure. I need to check up on that. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we uh, – well, I well I was talking to one of our correspondents. I was talking to Joey the other day, and uh, Joey Joey uh, he informed me because he goes to the to the state championship game every year. He goes every year, and he when he does go, he always uh, goes to all the games and he'll watch all of them. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is is maybe we can have Joey get on the show to tell us what happened after the championship games in Birmingham. And I may even make one or two of the games if I'm in, in uh, I'm looking to be in the uh, Montgomery area uh, early March. So if I'm there, uh, then then we'll see what we can make happen. All right. Sound good, man. Sound good. Sound good. So, Coach, let's continue to uh, keep the people informed of, of state basketball in the state of Alabama. And – um you know, as we get closer to to um, to the state championship games, you know, as much as much information as you have, that'll be great. And you also mentioned you knew a guy. Uh, if he know, if he if if he's familiar with what's going on, maybe we can have him on the show next week to kind of give people a uh, some insight into the talent and the basketball talent and and the teams that are going to be playing in the, in in the state tournament. Sound like a plan, my brother. Well, Coach, uh, let's get into these shout-outs and disappointments, Coach. Coach, you know why we do this podcast? We're trying to help America, man. Coach, we're making America great, Coach. Coach, Coach, we do something that, that no other podcast show does. We do something that no other uh, just entertainment show does, and, and, and we make America great. So, Coach, this is a point in the show where you like to highlight those individuals that they didn't make America great this week. They were di- big disappointments. Highlight those individuals, Coach. I have one disappointment this week, and um, I'm going to put myself on the disappointment list. Uh-oh. I decided me and my family, our outing for this month fell on the day, and we went to Chuck E. Cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the world's greatest mouse, Chuck E. Cheese. Chucky's Happy Dance. This is the dance I do whenever I feel happy. And when I don't feel so happy, all I have to do is my happy dance, and then I feel happy. Do you guys want to dance with me? Yeah! Great. 
It's really easy. Just follow me. Put your hands in the air as you jump up and down. Then you bop side to side. Then you turn around. Then give yourself a high five. Just give yourself a high five. America, those of you that don't have kids, uh, Chuck E. Cheese is a money trap. <laughs> a money pit. It is a black hole that just sucks the finances out of your wallet. Uh, we had a great deal going into Chuck E. Cheese where we were able to get our meal plus 100 tokens. But oh, wow. when it was all said and done, a hundred tokens was not enough, and I was forced to open my wallet. Well, how many? How many? How, how many tokens does it take to play? Like you know, the game where you roll the balls into the into the little holes up there at the top. Most of those activities only cost one token, and you had a hundred of them. One hundred. Okay, help me understand how. how and I was still forced. Due to the the awesome establishment known as Chuck E. Cheese, to still take three more dollars out of my wallet and cash them in. <laughs> and, and the sad part about it is, when you slide that dollar into that slot at Chuck E. Cheese, how many coins would you expect to get? Four. Only get three. <laughs> <laughs> so America, I put myself on the disappointment list. Um, my two-year-old really don't understand the games, but she love to drop them coins in there when you're not looking. <laughs> and, and, and I decided that I was going to get them coins back by opening up my wallet. And uh, I shouldn't have done that. I fell under the the the, 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 the pool of, the, of Chuck E. Cheese and this establishment. And for that, I put myself on a disappointment list. A hundred tokens should have been enough. And I gotta do a better job of watching the two year old. So what what uh what comes with the deal? Did you uh so y'all had some pizza? Yeah, pizza, get a few wines, and um get a hundred tokens. Hundred was enough. Well go go they that, that pizza over at Chuck and Cheese pretty good. Yeah, it ain't bad, man. It ain't bad at all, man. But I you know, I fell under the trap, man. That's what they do, they trap me. Yeah, what do they what did you what did what did y'all bring home as as gifts? What did your hundred dollars pay what did your hundred tokens pay for? Well, we got a spinning top. We got an octopus, <laughs> a dolphin, a photo, and a bracelet. Well, how many how many tickets total was that, Coach? Two hundred. No, we had three hundred tickets exactly. Oh, that, 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 that that's productive day. That's on the low end for the Oliver family. That's on the low end. That's on the low end for the Oliver family. We got gyp today. <laughs> we got gyp today. But uh, well, congratulations I'm, to to your daughters. Oh yeah. Oh for, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm for, sure I step on a dolphin or octopus on the floor tonight. Or spinning top, probably wind up in my shoe or something. Uh, but they happy. It's Valentine's Day. Thank you, Chuck E. Cheese. Thank you. <laughs> That's it for my disappointment. Well, okay, I got one disappointment today. And, Coach, it's really around just television in general. Coach, Coach it ain't nothing on TV to watch. Yeah, Coach, it's, it's, when, when football season over with, Coach, I found myself watching snowboarding, Coach. Wow. Coach, I saw I saw the guy do a front side 12 and a back side 50. Woo. It's coach, like peanut butter inside, outside jelly. Coach, coach I watched him do I watched snowboarding and he did a front side 12 and a back side 900. I apologize. It's a back side 900. I was I had I had kept eight hundred and fifty of that backside from from that guy. <laughs> Friends, the, the the announcer got excited, coach. I was watching the show and he say, "He just done a front side twelve, a front side twelve, and now he finishes with a backside nine hundred, coach." Crunk. 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 And the day before that, coach, on NBC. The same station I was watching, Coach. I watched 
the U.S. Olympic trial marathon. And I watched both the men and the women. Uh, I, I saw the start of that. I was able to fall asleep for 25 minutes. And they still run. Wake up and see the finish line. Ooh, so go go go! This appointment goes out to the television programming. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, right now. I'm wearing some batteries out right now. Man, it's rough. Man, it's real rough. But uh, I am looking forward to. I did. I did enjoy Saturday night. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But uh, last night, where they had some really good television programming on, so uh, that's pretty much it. Just uh, throughout the day. Um, Saturday and and even today I found myself coach. I'm watching a really good documentary, the seven five, the seven five coach. Uh shout out to the Combat Jack show uh for introducing me uh to this particular uh, documentary. But it's a it's a really good documentary uh that I was able to find and uh, I'm about an hour away from it. So once we finish this podcast, I'm gonna finish the rest of it. But the seven five uh, it's essentially about a, a cricket cop. It's a true story of, of New York, coach, and policing in New York and Brooklyn in the 90s. So if you get a chance, go to, if you got Showtime on demand, coach, check it out, coach. I got you, my brother. All right. Any more disappointments? That's it, man. All right, get into these shout-outs. Shout-out, shout-out. My first shout-out goes to Hampton University. Hampton became the first HBCU. Uh, in Division One history to feel the lacrosse team. Uh, they played their first game the other day against Division Two school and got plastered. I think the final score may have been like 23 to 8 or something like that, but uh, shout out to Hampton. Uh, one reason I decided to bring this up is because, you know, I don't know back down in the Mobile area, but lacrosse is really taking off around here in this area. A lot of kids are becoming very interested in it to where uh, I know in Auburn, we even have a, um, a club team on the high school, middle school, and elementary school level uh, where they travel and go to tournaments and stuff. So um, I, I thought that was pretty cool. And it's good to see Hampton be the first HBCU. So, 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 Cole, let me give you some background on this. Uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. About two years ago, I told a couple of friends of mine that live up here that we all should go in and invest in a lacrosse football league in the south i told them and i prophesied and i saw a vision and that with the concussions being such an issue uh and and with cte growing and growing and us learning more about concussions you're going to see more Little little kids and young people playing lacrosse, especially once it becomes popular in the South. And, you know, I don't want to get into all the details of what I suggested. But, Coach, I think we need to invest in a, uh, in a lacrosse professional team somewhere in the South. We need to find us. We need to start us a little league, lacrosse little league uh, in the South. And we need to essentially become – Dr. Bus and, and, and eventually we will become millionaires and billionaires because I foresee lacrosse, uh, growing exponentially. Well, like I said, it's, it's picking up around here. Um, and I told somebody, uh, probably not to the level of, of you predicting it in the South, but I told somebody I would look for it to be a state sport, um, in high school contested for a state championship. In a couple of years, uh, I think it's taking off that much. Now. Wow, coach, you are coach, coach, coach. I'm telling you, if yeah. if 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 you get lacrosse in the South, if you get the whole sport gonna boom because that's where the athletes. That's are. where the athletes are, and all you need to do is find one or two, introduce one or two of these young young people that are real fast that they don't want to play football and get them to lacrosse, and they can become the 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 twenty uh the twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen um Jim Brown the LeBron James of lacrosse. Oh yeah, well just you know as a side you know I don't know if many people know this but the same way Under Armour puts on the 
an all-American game for foot, football high school seniors. They do the same thing in lacrosse. And Under, Arm, Under Armour does a uh, Under Armour does an all-American lacrosse game like they do in high for high school football seniors for lacrosse. Wow. And it's it's pretty big in Birmingham too because I know a lot of teams here, the club teams travel up there and play a lot. So um uh, I told some people that I, I expect it to be a school sport uh, when the next time that come around to, to choose which sports they'll go. Coach, I believe it, Coach. And I actually see lacrosse being – and this is a – It's this a cross is, to me between football and soccer. That's what it is. But but the thing about it is is you're not going to see – you're yeah. going to see football decline in the South. Yeah. You're not going to see as many athletes playing football. And but they're still going to enjoy that physicality. I don't right. think soccer can ever be the primary sport in the urban community. But I do believe I saw an article on AL dot com, and it showed an urban uh, team in Birmingham that was being uh, introduced to the game of lacrosse and how they really were were enjoying it. And this was me. Oh, yeah. This was me just on AL dot com looking, and I was like, "This is more evidence that lacrosse." Once it becomes, it may never reach the level of SEC football, but I can see the potential of it being more popular um, than ever before. Yeah, it's definitely picking up in this area, man. So Coach, keep me posted. Man. Keep me posted on that. Keep me posted on oh. lacrosse. And you say the young people playing. Who who are the young people playing down there? Like I, I know there are kids at my school that play. And those are age, those are grades three through five. I know our high school has a club team. Uh, I think they play other high school club teams. I don't know how all that is arranged and all that kind of stuff, but I don't mind trying to, I don't mind getting to the bottom of it. I, I, I'll ask around, but, um. Yeah, ask around and let me know. Ask around and I'll be interested. Do girls, they have a little league? Huh? We don't have a little league. Like I said, it's sort of like, you know how like travel basketball works in most places? Gotcha. It's like, gotcha. it's like that. They got one guy that coaches them, and they, you know, they uniform up. Parents get the money, and they just travel and play. Wow. Yep. wow. Actually, they play, they play fall and spring league. I, I will be interested in interviewing one of somebody also, Cole. Let's talk about saying we can get. I would be interested to hear more about to hear more about that. All right, we'll get into it. I really would because I really believe, and I've been saying this for two years, and people have been laughing at me up here because I said, I'm telling you, with this concussion thing, you're going to see less and less uh, parents wanting their kids to play football. And the substitute is going to be, uh, it's going to be lacrosse. You're going to see, you're going to see a rise in lacrosse, and you're going to see a rise in baseball. You're going to see more urban kids playing baseball again. Oh, yeah. Watch what oh. I tell you. Oh, yeah. Sorry to take away from your shout out, coach, but that was very, that was very, inter- that was very interesting. I'm actually, as we talk now, I'm sending a text, uh, to two, uh, to two of the listeners and, uh, two of the folks that I talked to this about before to, to, to really, to really rehash that point because that's something. And, and I was actually surprised that you said it on the show. Um, the HBCU, because I was watching that yesterday, and I was text, texting about that to these same guys about um, Hampton being um, the first uh, HBCU to have Division One lacrosse team. So that that right there also kind of it's it's kind of affirmation that that I'm telling you my vision is accurate. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's picking up, brother. That that's 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 definitely happening right now. My next shout out goes out to obviously Valentine's Day. Shout out to all the flower shops, edible arrangements, Russell Stover's, uh, Victoria and her secrets, and all the hotel motels and holiday inns. <laughs> My next shout out goes out to Kevin Hart. Uh, Do not shout winning. him out. Do not shout him out. I got it. He stay winning, man. Man, don't shout him out, man. He stay winning. I know. I feel you, but he man, stay that dude, winning. That dude again, is not. Okay, again, go ahead, go ahead, he, go ahead. He, he found a way to, I, like, like they probably inviting this dude on All-Star Weekend now. Oh, definitely. Definitely. All that's been paid. He, he stay winning, man. He stay winning. Shout out to Zach Levine, Clay Thompson, uh, magnificent uh, performances. And shout out to my man, Shaq. Shaq got a lot of 
<laughs> people got mad at Diesel for uh, you gotta get it the first. He, he was saying what he was saying, Coach. That's right. First try. <laughs> Shout out to you, Shaq. It does take a little way, a little bit from the dunk after you don't try it for the thirteenth time. Shout out to you, Shaq, for staying true to the dunk contest. And my last shout out is a shout out to somebody that me and you have mentioned on this show, a person that you have repeatedly asked me about that I spoke to okay. today. Okay, okay. Shout out to a young lady by the name of Mary Ashton Nall. Mary Ashton Nall was an athlete of mine at Auburn High School and went on to compete at the University of Ole Miss. Mary called me this morning. After receiving my Happy Valentine's Day text, Mary Ashton is assistant to the person who handles um, public relations for the NCAA. She is the assistant, the admin assistant. She's the administrative director assistant of um, of the person that handles. I had the title right in my head. I apologize, America. Well, they know in it on your phone, coach. Just pull out your phone. Oh, we were talking. We talked. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, she's the assistant to the director of of public relations for the NCAA. That's it. Well, congratulations. She starts that job tomorrow. Uh, she lives in Indianapolis. She's doing very well for herself. Oh, and on this, as a side note, shout out to Hugh and Sandra. Uh, her parents today is their thirty second wedding anniversary. So the, the Nall family is doing well. And uh, happy to hear from Mary. Um, hopefully, I see her here pretty soon after March Madness. She'll find her way back to Auburn, and we'll sit down and chat for a bit. Give them all my shout outs. Cole, that was a very good shout out. We got some very good conversation, but highly disappointed that you would throw Kevin Hart into I the shout that. out, Coach. I know. I know. He making that bread, though, cuz. Shout outs. Shout out goes to, the, to just the entire. NBA All Star uh, contest last night, coach. I, I thought just everything was perfect last uh, last night. They had the big men versus the little men in the skills challenge. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Big men won that one. You got out. Shout out always. Shout out to big men. Uh, three point contest went down to uh, the the Splash Brothers, uh, and 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 that was competitive. You always want to see that. And I was almost about to make the recommendation, similar to what Chuck said, Charles Barkley, that they should probably move the three-point contest as the last event and have the slam dunk contest as the second event. But the slam dunk the contest didn't let me down this year, Coach. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. But I almost – you gave a shout-out to, to Zach, um, to Levine, uh, but I actually think that Aaron Gordon should also get a shout out. And, right. and to be honest with you, I think he should have won the dunk contest. Ooh. Coach, he did some things. I mean, that hoverboard, the, uh, I don't know what kind of mask out of maybe we need to get Gus was catfish on this show, but whatever kind of mask out of magic is, that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> but, <laughs> Coach, Go. That, that thing come out down the hoverboard, and I don't know if that's going to frighten the kids or make the kids happy, but I don't know what that is, but that thing's got on that hoverboard and started turning around, and uh, shout out to Aaron Gordon because he, he was able to dunk it with the guy turning around in the circle, and then the second one was when he went he sat in a chair coach and dunked it. Yeah, they, somebody called that the toilet seat. That's what they called it. I heard so I saw one somebody on them on ESPN tweeted the toilet seat dunk. I don't know. I don't know if it was the toilet seat, if it was the ring around the seat. I don't know, but 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 <laughs> but shout out to Aaron Gordon because I actually think he should have won the dunk contest. And 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 whatever that thing is, we we gonna have to ask. And and as we and, and as we continue this conversation, I'm gonna te- te- text send a text to Gus with catfish and ask him what that. Uh, Let's let let's let's text. We gonna text him live on the show. Gus was catfish. He a, he a dragon, man. His name Stuff the Magic Dragon. Did you look him up? Yeah, I GTS him. GTS, coach. I have no no idea what that thing is. It's a dragon dog. 
Oh, that, that's a drag. That thing girl. came that out down the stuff. That thing came out down. Drag. It came out down the hoverboard. <laughs> I was like, what? The, that, how's that gonna scare the kids? <laughs> <laughs> what's oh, what? Tell the people what's his name one more time. Stuff the magic dragon. Okay, shout out to stuff. And last but not least, go. This is more entertainment. Um. Shout out to the shout out to FX coach. Coach, FX got a series going on that's taking me back to my childhood and having me relive moments of the nineties that that I remember very well. Coach, FX has a show that comes on called The People vs. OJ. Now, you and I both know when it's on because Gus was catfish continues to text us when it is on. <laughs> And, and gives us a play, and gives us a play by play at ten o'clock yep. on at at ten o'clock at night on Eastern Eastern Coast. And tell us how he'll turn us in. <laughs> and tell us how A. C. Collins was more loyal than he would be to us. Right. So, so coach, uh, I, coach, you haven't you haven't watched the show yet, have you? I haven't seen it yet, man. But you know, everybody be talking about it. I I haven't seen it yet. How much? I, well, let me give you a quick breakdown. I did want to talk about this as part of the show. Uh, well, it's going to be a part of my shout outs. Um, but what makes it so good, coach, is that, it, again, it's taking you back to the nineties. Do you remember how much of that, of that trial do you remember, coach? Oh, man. It was like, it was like, it was everything. Yeah. It was, do you remember? So, so we're on episode two. We're on episode two now. Episode two just covered the uh, the white Bronco. I mean, I can remember my teachers watching it in class, like doing breaks and stuff, like having the trial. Have you talking about the trial? Because, or, or because having it on CNN or yeah, anything, any yeah. coverage about that, it was everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you talking about the trial? But do you do you remember where were you? When the white Bronco chase was on 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 four on, on the four five, I think I was coming home from somewhere. I don't mm-hmm. know if we at store or something. But when I walked in the house, TV was already on, and you just watch it. Coach, let me tell you. Let me tell you something, Coach. Coach, I remember it like it was yesterday, and, and and the movie makes it so real because that was it was an NBA playoff game being played on NBC. NBC decided to cut away from that NBA playoff game to cover the white Bronco. I was sitting on the floor of my parents' room with my parents watching the coverage of OJ in the Bronco. And coach, just how real and just how, and, and just reflecting and remembering them days just talks about the tension, the race tensions in America during that particular time. And it just brings, watching that show just brings back so much memories. You know, they talk about how OJ had the gun to his head and AC Collins is riding on the four five interstate. Uh, he got about 12 cars. The people are in the coach. The people were in the, uh, in the overpasses. In the overpasses, the people were there cheering, cheering on oh, the juice. Signs and everything. Yeah, they had the sign. We love you, Juice. We love like Run parade. Juice. Like it's a parade. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, Coach. Yeah, it was crazy. Coach, it's crazy, Coach. But just to give the people a quick update on the actual show and what we have so far, Coach, uh, and I actually should have put one of these on disappointments, but Coach, um, I don't know if you remember, but OJ, who was played by Cuban Gooden Jr., and, 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 I, I think they could have did a better job of cat. I like how Cuban, uh, Cuban is playing the role, but he, but he Trey. He always gonna be Trey. <laughs> go, go. How you, how you got Cuban, how you got Cuban getting Junior playing OJ? I mean, slag, dog. he Trey. And he's sitting there crying, and I'm like, Trey, stop that crying. That's how I feel about Will Smith, bro. <laughs> I cannot take him serious, man. That that the Fred Prince. Exactly. 
But I'm really? sitting here watching it. He he doing it the best he can, and he doing it. I mean, I don't want to take away from his acting because I think he's doing a great job acting. But he Trey, you know. I'm looking at OJ, and I'm saying that's Trey. Yeah, you right. Uh, Johnny Cochran, man, I'm telling you, uh, the the guy that they got playing Johnny Cochran looks just like Johnny Cochran, but he a beast. Johnny Cochran is somebody that we need in 2016 today. Cause coach, once you watch that show, man, I've met Johnny Cochran so much. Uh, but it's early, the early stages in the game, but the guy's a man of integrity. He ain't taking no BS and he's saying what he want to say. And I really like the guy that's playing Johnny Cochran. Uh, the guy that they got playing Robert Shapiro, who is going to eventually be the, the head guy, man, that dude just about himself. And you know who they got playing him, coach? Travolta. <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> Do you remember Robert Shapiro? He was the main guy. He was he was he yeah. was he was OJ's main yeah. lawyer guy. Uh they got him playing on the show. Uh John Travolta and and he walking around there like a slickster. It, it, it's just a funny. He he's a funny character. Um Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, Saturday Night Fever, Greasy and all that kind of stuff. And uh what what's the name of the other show? The Urban baby, Cowboy. the bank, the baby's talking. What's the name of the baby's talking show? Look who's talking. Look who's talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got look who's talking on now. <laughs> look who's talking one and two. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go. But, uh, it's a good show, but I'm going to tell you the one that, that really got me, coach. They got Marsha Clark on now. She definitely taking this thing personal. You know, Marsha Clark is going to be the prosecutor that takes OJ to trial and she's going to have the black Guy Christopher Doherty, uh, uh, he is right now is, is coach. You just need to watch it because he's in a very interesting position. Uh, and his dad basically said, told him not to take the trial. So we'll see what's going to happen and how he's going to be, how he's going to get the trial, which is going to be very interesting, interesting. But they got him on there. But coach, you want me? I don't know if you remember this, but OJ Simpson was very good friends with Robert Kardashian. Oh, my God. Do you know who Robert Kardashian is, Coach? Now, you call me out by Kevin Hart. Please don't go there. Coach, This is I'm not shouting. This is one of the big disappointments of the show. Robert Kardashian is in the movie... And the role he plays in the movie and the way this movie is playing to the Kardashian family is ridiculous. Coach, in the very first episode, OJ was at the Kardashian house. He was in a bedroom in which he was about to commit suicide. This is before AC Collin comes over there and AC Collin gets him. Uh, OJ had written a suicide note and he was about to kill himself. Robert Kardashian goes up to try to talk to him and try to convince him not to kill himself. Guess what he says in the line? What did he say? Please don't kill yourself in my baby chemist room. Oh my God. This is my baby chemist room. That's episode one. I kind of downplay it. You go, you fast forward to episode Two, OJ is on the run. OJ is in the white Bronco. Robert Shapiro and Robert Kardashian decide to hold a news conference to basically talk about themselves, but also for Robert Kardashian to read the suicide note of OJ Simpson. Robert Kardashian reads the suicide note He's asked the question. They say, how do you pronounce your name? Kardashian. He say, no, Kardashian. Well, when the reporter reports the wrong name, they go to the Kardashian house with four little kids are sitting there. And the four little kids are cheering their dad on. And they get upset when the dad, when the reporter says the last name incorrectly, and they scream at the TV, it's Kardashian. Coach, guess who those four little kids were? 
enlighten me. Chloe, Courtney, Kim, and Rob. The Kardashians. Coach, the big disappointment of this show, The People versus OJ, is they are playing to the Kardashian family, and I don't like it. So anyway, I know I done said a lot, um, but but I did want to mention that, Coach. It's a good show, Coach. And and you really, if you can, now if you want to do something tonight, you say, well, y'all going to watch that All-Star game, you and your brother. But I'm going to tell you, if you had to get a moment, watch episode one uh, of that of that People vs. OJ, and you really get into it. You get a chance to see Trey, and you get a chance to see John Travolta, and look who's talking, and, and all those guys revamp their career on FX. I got you, my brother. I'm about to go and get on it. FX on demand. FX on demand. So that's all I got. Sweet. So anyway, uh, any more things with, with shout outs and disappointment? That's it for shout out disappointment, man. All right, let's fast forward. Any tips that you want to give parents or anybody that weak? Yeah, I got a little short one right here. Um, Amer- uh, parents of America. Uh, if your child plays or participates in an after-school activity, i.e. band, i.e. Uh, 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 flag twirler, uh, sports. Athletics is not a substitute for babysitting. <laughs> That's true, Coach. Coach, repeat that one more time. Athletics is not a substitute for babysitting. Okay? We 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 don't it's not our job to stay there while you run down the street. Thank you. Or or, or, or while, while you run over there for a minute. You need to come and pick up your child when practice is over. Thank they got you. after school programs, church Boys and girl club, grandma house, taking the Shay house. Shay don't never work. Shay stay at home all day. Take him down the street, Shay house. <laughs> Go. But we should not have to stay after practice 45 minutes to an hour waiting on you. Well, what is mama doing? I don't know. That's a great question. What are you doing, parents of America? If you cannot come and get your child at a reasonable time, then you need to do a better job of arranging for somebody to come and get them. Or 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 that child may have to not participate. Now we don't want for the kids to not participate, but you know, coaches have lives also. Coaches' lives matters, America. Repeat, we, repeat it one more time, Coach. Coaches have lives. Hashtag coach. Coaches' lives matter. Hashtag coaches' lives matter. That's what we're trying to do. Make America great again. And I don't know about the little league, but I know once you get up to school age, it is a liability for a coach to take your son or daughter home. Do we do it sometimes? Yes. But if an accident occurs with your child in our vehicle, that is a problem. Potentially a legal problem. So America, parents of America, please do a better job of coming to get your child at a reasonable time. I mean, don't you think your child get tired of being the last one picked up every night? <laughs> Come on, man. You got to do better up here. And you know they do because I remember the day that I've I've been the last one picked up due to uh, a wreck on the interstate. It was a one-time offense. Go, you're not talking to the one-time parents, are you? No, I ain't talking to them. You're talking about, to I'm the talking obituary. To, yes, talking to you, repeat offender. <laughs> I'm talking to you. I'm um, late four days a week. Yeah, I'm talking to you. This t- this tips for you. If the shoe fit, wag. 
Hashtag coaches lives matter too. That's what I'm we need to that. do, coach. You got to say hashtag coaches lives matter. T O O. Cause if you just say coaches lives matter, then, then they're going to, then it's going to be a, a plot, a play on hashtag black lives matter. You got to put the two on there so that you can also associate the coaches lives to the black lives. Amen. I'm off my soapbox. No, nah, that was a good one, coach. That was a very good tip. That was a very good tip because of the ripple effect. Coach, because when you late, because the parent is late, now I go to bed late. And then BG gets the, gets the recording late. And everybody got to stay up later than they normally would. All because one parent couldn't be on time. Selfish. That's selfish. That's an I attitude. That's an I. That's a me. That ain't looking at the team. That ain't looking at us. So I agree, Coach. Good good tip. Coach, for the next five minutes, I got a question for you. Go ahead, my bro. I understand this is Kobe's last year. I understand Kobe was probably one of the best basketball players of the millennium generation. He's not my greatest basketball player of my lifetime. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player I've seen play in his prime. But I understand the role that Kobe Bryant has played um, with the L.A., with NBA, just with Olympic basketball in general. But the question I have for you, especially considering we are recording this game, we are recording this show before the NBA All-Star game happens. Uh, I'm going to make a bold prediction that Kobe Bryant is going to win the MVP. Uh, I wish Isaiah Thomas would come out there and just just because this is his first game and just go for 40 to outshine Kobe Bryant and for there to be an argument and a fight on the on the NBA center court, but I doubt that happened. I believe that they're going to allow Kobe to get the All-Star MVP award. But the question I have for you, I understand the role that Kobe plays. I understand he is the Mamba, Kobe Mamba. Um, the original. The original. Yeah, I got to say that. The original Kobe Mamba. But, Coach, is the media giving Kobe too much love? Are they dick riding Kobe right now? I think the media plus I think the ownership of the L.A. Lakers have all just – they've done way too much for Kobe. Now, let me say I have – America, I have always been tough on Kobe. Are you a Laker fan? I am not a Laker fan. In the NBA, I'm more of a player fan. I've never been a big time fan of Kobe. But I recognize what, what real is and Kobe is one of the best to ever lace them up. Real neck, recognize, like real recognize, real. Real recognize, real. I feel, I feel like Kobe, I feel like Kobe has run, has helped run the Lakers franchise into an abyss that I don't know when they'll be able to get out of it because of, of him. Um, you know, and, and Kobe's not the only one that has this problem, but you know, it's always been hard, I think for people to play with Kobe and that along with him having a hard time realizing in his latter years, how much he still had left in the tank has allowed that franchise to bleed money into him, and now what kind of return do they have on it? When Kobe leaves, they don't have a lot of – they'll have cap room, but if they are unable to land a marketable superstar, where does that leave that franchise? Well, they got Russell, Cole. D'Angelo Russell, they say, had the potential to be a superstar. Potential. That's a big, that's a far cry from what the Lakers franchise is used to. This is true. This is true. It's been a long time since the Lakers had to rely on potential. This they've is true. always had that star. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the farewell thing is kind of going a little far right now. It's I mean, over the top. It's over it, the top. It, and let's it, just, it, let's it, just it call is. it what it is. And, and for him to possibly, um, Kobe better not win that MVP tonight. He probably will, Coach. They're going to give it to him. Kobe better not win that MVP, man. I saw a stat, Coach. Let me tell you what gives me more 
of a belief that he will. They had on the bottom, they had on the ticker, on the ESPN ticker, it said, Kobe is attempting to go for the, to be the oldest player to win a NBA All-Star MVP at 37. Guess who he competing against? Ooh. Right now, currently the leader is Shaquille O'Neal at 36. Now, you know good and well, Kobe wants to outdo Shaq. Well, how many attempts they going to let him take? Then? I, I just don't see him getting off like that. They not going to play no defense, coach. He going to get that, lay up that, here, lay up there. In a way, but I feel you. Huh? I said they'll barely play defense anyway. But yeah, yeah, they're gonna barely play defense, but they're gonna get out of the way when Kobe coming through the lane. So, so, so basically, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to sit here and watch and watch uh, the Kobe warm, show. Watch a game that looked like a warm up practice. Basically, well, that's what it is. That's what the NBA I, coach. I don't even like the product. Maybe we can talk about the product of the NBA because I don't even like to watch the NBA no more. Or college basketball. It's just not entertaining. The product has gone down so much that if I'm not watching Golden State, then what I'm watching NBA for? I'm telling you. It's, it's going to be, I mean, I watched the Rising Star for, for 10 minutes on Friday and I said, man, I can't watch this mess. And why they playing like that? They ain't even established yet. Coach, I don't know. They, no defense up and down the court. It's ridiculous. I, I, they, they would have been better off just showing the, 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 the sons and daughters of NBA players and they slam dunk contest. Did you see that, Coach? I did not see. where well, I saw some clips of it. I did not see the whole thing. Yeah, they need to have that as, as a replacement entertainment because this rising star mess is ridiculous. Well, they need to take Kobe out in the last couple of minutes when everybody going at it because I don't need a geese on the court. I, I mean, can we, can we see some? Well, I, I, like I said, I believe that, I believe Kobe's gonna get the MVP. You mean I, to tell me and not one player in that game is not gonna come in with the attitude of screw Kobe? Russell, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. All right, Westbrook, my MVP. <laughs> Russell Westbrook don't give a damn. Russell Westbrook don't give a, uh, uh, a flying nothing about no Kobe. <laughs> All right, well, then I'm going with Westbrook. I'm going with Westbrook. So, so we'll find out, Omega. Uh, we'll, what about Dwight? What about Dwight? I was, I was about to say that. I was about to, I was about to ask you about that because you brought it up. You brought it up. You made me remember when you started talking about the Lakers can't get a franchise guy, and I did want to spend two more minutes on that. Go. If the White Howard would have canceled, what, what, what is, what, what's up with that guy? Dwight Howard is the new age Patrick Irwin. Patrick who? <laughs> Patrick Hewen? <laughs> Patrick Irwin. <laughs> who is Patrick Irwin? Patrick Hewen. Patrick Hewen. Okay, okay, Patrick okay. Why Patrick, do you say I that? Why it is the new age Patrick Hewen? Can, you, can't, you can't put that up. You can't say that. Yeah, I can because Patrick Patrick never won one. And Dwight ain't gonna never win. But but, but 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 Patrick like, played for the same. He played for the same team, and he wasn't a and he wasn't a team killer. Patrick Hewen <laughs> played for played for the Knicks his entire career. Nor did he he the difference. Patrick Hewen just happened to play during a year where he, where he played against the greatest. They that's what they said. They say Pat, They say Jordan prevented a lot of guys from winning championships. Charles Barkley and Patrick Hewen are the two that come to mind that they always talk about. Oh, yeah. But he's played on the same team. He was not a he was not a a coach killer. He was not a program killer. I'm thinking skill set, a, 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 a big man with athletic ability that never was able to win one. Now you're right. Uh, I think Dwight Howard is a very immature individual. Um, I do think he has matured a little bit, but he has a far way to go in order to to do what it takes. I think I think I think in Dwight's Latter years, when his skills start to diminish, and all he has to rely on is somebody else, uh, we may see a change in this guy. But until then, I don't think it'll ever happen. The guy, I'm, the coach that that had him playing at his best and at his greatest, he ran him away in Orlando with that. Uh, what name of that dragon again? Stuff with stuff with stuff the dragon and and Stan Van Gundy. They ran. He ran him away. And ever since he ran Stan Van Gundy away and decided he wanted to take his, his quote unquote talents to LA, 
he hasn't lived up to anything. And he don't have the skill set to lead a team. He don't have the mentality to lead a team on his own. But he can't realize that right now because he's too immature. Um, I, I don't want to say he's a team killer, but uh, this guy has a long way to go. Why wouldn't you say that? Kobe ran him away because he had no heart. He also need to go, Coach, it sounds like he need to go see the Wizard, the Wiz. Yeah, he might have, that might help him out. He need to go see the Wiz. He should have been on that live show with Neo and and all them folks and 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 went over there and and hopped on and skipped on alone as the Wiz because you, you just said you just brought up something very interesting. I want us to do for next week's show. What's that? Your your starting five, your starting five NBA players that never won a championship that that are aren't currently playing. Oh, that's easy. Star five retired NBA players that never won an NBA championship. Let's have that for their week. NBA players that never won an NBA championship. Your star five. Well, I just gave you my. I just gave you two. I gave you. Uh, I gave you Barkley and Hewen. Okay. All I need now is a is a point guard, and and I can give you that one too. Who that is? That would be um, I say for next week, but I got okay. it right all now. Right, all right, all right. That next week. That's actually, your homework. actually, actually, I got two of them from that same thing, and I give you a hint. Flu game. I smell you. <laughs> and two of them played on that team. So all I need is one more guy, huh? That's me. One more guy. We'll, we'll have that next week. That'll be next week. Mm-hmm. So let's get up out of here, Coach. Coach, I got my package uh, the other day. I'm starting to, I'm starting my cleanse on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I got my two packages out that I got for my two new customers, and uh, uh, thing going good, man. Uh, like I said, Africa, we make champions. Uh, I'm gonna keep posting the link. Uh, get on there and try some. Uh, it's something on there for everybody. I promise you, it's something on there that you can use. Some something that you did can you, benefit. Did you send those other ones out uh, that you said you oh, they, sent? Oh, they sent, man. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for for everybody. To let me know. Everything been sent out. When did you send them out? Because I can find uh, out from. Should have been list. Friday. Probably it'll probably be this week sometime. Oh, okay. So they'll get it this week. Yep. Okay. 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 They looking forward to it. So maybe when you when you listen at this on Tuesday, uh, it might be in your box when you get home. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Mhm. Uh, so that's all you got? That's it, man. Don't let me down tonight, where book. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get up out of here. This is your boy Tight. Uh, we got Coach with us. This is D One Sports Talk Podcast, the podcast that's that's here to make you guys better, uh, and you guys are America. So with us making you better, we are making America better, Coach. If they hey. if they knew better. They would do better. Hey man. Uh, hey man. Hey man. Shout out the New South Movement, man. Well, I appreciate it, man. Shout out the New South Movement, man. Well, somebody had somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. Shout out the New South Movement. You got uh you got the Retroscope podcast. Y'all need to go and check that one out with Sha Peacock and BG the two seven kid. Man, that's a coach. If you ever get a chance uh, listen to that podcast, and I'm telling America to go and listen to that podcast too. They talk about some real issue on there. I'm pretty sure tomorrow they're gonna talk about Beyonce and how she was slaying the formation, huh? That two seven kid trying to get to the moon, man. Man, that two seven kid on it, but yeah, 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 he is. Yeah, but uh, that shot Peacock, man, she she tough too though. She bring that fire, so that's a okay. very good podcast, man. Uh, so I'm pretty we sure got our, we got our very own heels and hers. He is and hers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you got the, on Tuesday, you got this D1 Sports Talk podcast. Um, Thursdays, you had the free lunch podcast. And don't forget about the girl talk podcast. Uh, man, we just got a whole catalog of podcasts. Got some new ideas coming up. Coach, I'm probably going to be in that, in that, I'm, well, I'm going to be in that Alabama that week of, uh, that first week of, of, of March, so maybe we can all get up, man. I'm, I think we're going to be down there in Selma, though, so we'll see. All right, my boy. All right, let's get up out of here. D1 Sports Talk Podcast. We're on the IG at D1 Sports Talk Podcast. 
Uh, we also on YouTube. Uh, if you just search for Free Lunch TV, you'll see. Uh, you can get this, these shows on YouTube and then you can also get it from the blog spot, d one sports talk dot blog spot dot com. So, uh, that's about it, coach. We out of here. Yeah. Yeah.